Hello friends, this is Revolver 44. I'm excited today to bring you a review of a gun that I was very happy to and very lucky to find. This is a um, revolver. It, it, it's a Smith & Wesson Model 65-5. It's in beautiful condition. Let me show you what, what, what comes in the box. I got the box and everything. It's a plastic box with foam padding. It came with um, the manual. This is something for additional grips. It has the, um, the warranty card, even the original wax paper, oil paper, I mean, that comes with the gun. So that, that was a, a bonus to not only find the gun, which was unbelievable, I, I just couldn't believe it, and have, have it come with the box and the paperwork. That's just really, really unusual in my area. Put that aside for now and get to the gun. Okay, this is a beautiful, beautiful piece. I just couldn't believe it when I saw it listed for sale at my local FFL. It was like, um, wow, I, I'd never seen one like this. Let's uh, go over the features of the gun. It's beautiful. Um, start with the, the, on the barrel. This has a, a three inch bull barrel that's crowned on the front to, to protect the rifling. It has a ramp front sight that is serrated on the top. It's built into the barrel. It's all one piece. The top of the gun has a matte finish to hold down the glare if you're in the sun which extends to the whole length of the barrel to the channeled rear sight, which is milled into the top of the frame of the gun. It has a, a knurled hammer that's .265 in width. The hammer is also has the firing pin built into it that's pinned. The hammer and the trigger are color case hardened. That's a, another great feature. Let's show you that the gun is unloaded. It has a six round cylinder that will fire 357 Magnum or 38 Special. The ejector rod is exposed underneath the barrel, unlike a lot of other revolvers that have a shroud. This one is exposed. It's a full length ejector rod, so it gets the spent casings out without any trouble. The um, Model number is shown here, 65-5. The, the back strap, you can see here, is serrated. The front, the front strap, I mean, is serrated. Also, the back strap is serrated. These grips are beautiful walnut magna grips with the Smith & Wesson medallions. <clears throat> this gun is made on the Smith & Wesson K-frame with a round butt. See, it's round. It has a three screw 
frame. There's one screw here, one here, and there's one underneath the grip here. It has um, roll marks on the sides of the barrel. It's here it says Smith & Wesson 357 Magnum. And here you have your, your three line Smith & Wesson address line. On this side, it says Smith & Wesson on the barrel. And here you have the beautiful Smith & Wesson logo underneath the cylinder release. Just a remarkable piece and a real treasure for me to find this at my local gun store. This gun was used by many law enforcement agencies. It was used by the DEA. And it was also used by the FBI. The DEA began use of this probably in the early 80s. And switched over to the Model 13 somewhere along the line. Uh, but I think they used both. Uh, also, a lot of police departments, law enforcement agencies use this firearm. I know of a couple individuals, uh, local ones, um, the Massachusetts State Police used this gun. I saw one for sale on Gun Broker that had Massachusetts State Police engraved on the back strap. Also, the Massachusetts Registry of Motor Vehicles also used this firearm. Um, the, you notice that this gun here has a serrated back strap. Well, all the other round butt Model 65 three inch guns, you're not gonna find this. This was added late in the production run of this firearm on the uh, 65-5s. This one was made in 1996. And that's when they started doing this to the back strap. They only did it for 18 months. Then they discontinued it. Uh, I don't know why. Because this is a beautiful feature, I think. I think they should have done this to all of them from day one. I don't know why they didn't. It look, to me, it looks much better than the smooth, unserrated material. Now, like I said, this is caliber. This is um, this caliber is 357 and 38 special. Love the love the bull barrel. The um, serial numbers all, all are always marked on the bottom of the grip on these guns. Uh, I, I have a couple others to show you just for comparison. Um, I was tell, saying telling you that the Model Thirteen was used by the FBI also and the DEA. Well, this is one I previously did a review on, which is exactly the same gun as the Model 65. Which, and this is the Model 13. They're exactly the same, except this is the blued version of this gun. This one here was made in 1982. You notice that it doesn't have the serrated back strap. It has the smooth back strap, like I was telling you. But this is exactly the same gun as the 65. And this gun, the 65, Model 65, also came in uh, a four inch version. This was also commonly used by the police department law enforcement agencies. This four inch version, this is a dash three. 
You notice that it has the square butt with the smooth back strap and front strap. But this is the exact same gun as this, but in a four inch barrel and with a square butt frame. This is a 65-3, but it's other than that, it's the, the same thing, just the longer barrel and the square butt. Okay, let's, um, let's check the weight on this beautiful gun. you want to carry it which is always a possibility 31.22 ounces it's not bad that's not too too heavy let's uh, check the trigger pull weight See what it is in double action. Nine pounds, three point seven ounces. Try this in single action now. Two pounds, six point four ounces. Very good. Let's see uh, how this gun measures up dimensionally. The overall length is seven and three quarter inches long. By four and three quarters tall and check the cylinder diameter which is 1.415 thousandths diameter that sums up all the sizes and trigger pull weights and weight of the gun. I don't know what else I could tell you about this that I haven't told you already. Like I said, it's a beautiful piece and if you if you find one of these, I would definitely pick one up. It's a uh, really, if you're a revolver fan like I am, this is a treasure. It's something you're not going to find every day. Especially if you find one with the straight back strap and front strap, it's, it's an added feature that you don't see very often on these. The early, earlier versions, the Dash 1, the No Dash and the Dash 1, they had pin, pin barrel and counterboard cylinder chambers. The chambers here were counterboard. But they, they discontinued that early in the production. It was 19, what would it be, 70? Yeah, around 1971, 72. No, not 71, 72, excuse me. It would have been on the Dash, whatever year they stopped making the Dash 1. It's the, the no Dash, the Dash 1. And some of the Dash 2s, I think, had the um, pin barrel and the counterboard cylinder chambers. But that's not a necessary thing. They just did that because back then the, the casings weren't as strong as they were on the more modern ammunition casings. And as far as pinning the barrel, that was something that was really unnecessary because they now they screw these in and lock them in really tight 
So there's never any chance of them backing out. You can see that's a beautiful, beautiful piece. Well, that's all I have for this gun today. Um, thank you for watching. This is Revolver 44. Please like and subscribe, and I'll be getting more content out to you probably in the next couple of weeks. Thank you very much. Be safe, and have a good day.